Okay, so I've kind of talked about a few things from the Merlean side of things um, in regards to the Merlean warriors. Um, this video is going to be about the Eldian Restorationists. Um, this is, of course, the group that uh, Aaron's father, Grisha, was a part of um, before, you know, back when he was uh, in Liberio before he ended up coming to, you know, Paradis as a uh, fugitive by technicality. Um, these are, of course, the, the group of Eldians that seemed to reject what the uh, what the Merleans and what the rest of the world seemed to say about you know about Emir herself about Emir Fritz and about um, you know what her what she had been you know it's like to all of the Merleans and everything and what they teach so many what they teach the Eldians um, in the internment zones and things like that is that you know Emir Fritz was this horrible monster demon you know person that made this deal with this de you know the devil of all earth or whatever and you know that you know that she you know very much approved of like all of this horrible stuff that they did that like her descendants did and that all of you know and I'll, i went over you know i'll go over this or i went over this whichever in the uh subjects of amir uh for the way that like the rest of the world uh views the Eldians and how the uh, Eldians that are in the um, internment zones uh, are treated and what they're basically subjected to. And, you know, the, the Eldian restorationists, um, we, of course, um, when we finally get to, you know, the secret of the basement in the anime and in the manga, of course, um, we learn that, oh, okay, so Grisha was from outside the walls. He was from this place called... Uh, Liberio, the Liberio internment zone in a place called Marley, and he grew up there, and he had his parents, and he had his sister Freya, uh, uh, you know, Faye, and they were very happy, happy, um, they, they kind of the illusion of happy, and then of course, you know, Grisha and his sister went beyond the walls of the internment zone, and they ended up interacting with the two guards, one of them being uh, Aaron um, Kruger, and the other one being Gross. That is both what he is and his name. Um, and you know, Grisha, you know, says, you know, don't don't hurt my sister, hurt me, and everything. Of course, we know this. And you know, he takes the beating, and then he thinks that his sister, that Faye, is going to get taken back to the internment zone. And you know, that Gross says he'll take her back to the internment zone. We of course learn that this is not true. Uh, he, of course, takes her and just lets his, you know, sons and their dogs rip her apart so they can watch as this Eldian girl dies for their own amusement for something that her brother did. And then, of course, and, I'll, and this part will definitely still go, go over in the subject of a mirror video. Um, and, of course, we see the way that Aaron or that uh, Grisha's parents interact with that, the uh, way that they, you know, thank the two guards for a beating up their son and then b claiming that no i brought her you know gross is like no i brought her back here and left her at the uh, at the gate i don't know what happened to her and you know we you know grisha finds out you know years and years later because you know he grows up he becomes a doctor he kind of agrees with you know he you know this you know his parents kind of you know drum into him you know no you, you know we have to be punished for what um uh amir fritz did for the the bargain she made with the devil for you know all this stuff and then of course when grisha is you know when he grows up and he becomes a doctor um he ends up interacting with this patient who has this weird you know x mark x scar on his chest or on his shoulder and grisha asks about it and the guy says well i'm part of the eldian restorationists first of all <laughs> first of all code to anyone who decides to be part of a secret organization whether it be in comic books or in reality or in manga or in tv shows or whatever here's a tip um don't go around wearing some type of symbol that can be very much easily identify you as one of these people it's like, yeah, don't go boasting about the fact, of, oh, I have this X, you know, this X scar or whatever on my arm or chest or wherever. And I've got this, you know, it, it proves that I'm a restorationist. Dum 
don't tell the government that. They're just going to go around to like every single LDN who's acting abnormally and just go, okay, strip. We want to see you make sure you don't have this weird X-shaped scar on your body. Everywhere. And it's just, don't do that. It's like, it's like in Marvel, um, for, for a Marvel <laughs> comparative here, um, the members of the, uh, the magic group or the terrorist group later, or in the, uh, Tony, in the, uh, first Iron Man movie, there are the, the Ten Rings, the organization of the Ten Rings, and they have this, you know, symbol that's like these ten interconnected rings that all have different symbols inside of them. Uh, in the comics, this is a reference to, uh, the Mandarin, and in Iron Man 3, we get kind of the Mandarin tie-in in there with, um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, ben, uh, you know, Ben Kingsley's character, who's not actually the Mandarin, he's just pretending to be the Mandarin. And then we get, uh, in one of the, the little Marvel side video things that they did, the little Marvel shorts, there is a reporter who basically ends up showing that he has this symbol and that he's a member of the Ten Rings. And, you know, and now we're going to get, um, the, the one of the next Marvel movies that's going to come out is I think it's what is it um Shen uh, I probably am going to completely mispronounce their name but it's Shen something or other and then the Ten Rings and it's the Ten Rings in Marvel Comics is usually a source of uh, sorcery people that do sorcery and everything uh, so kind of like I guess like the bad versions of the uh, you know the Sorcerer Supreme and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's like they have these symbols on them, and I'm just like, why do you do that? that, that that's stupid. At least, like, even the Jaegerists didn't go around, like, having, like, a, a J or a Y or whatever carved into their arm or something like that. Like, hi, what's with that J in your hand? Nothing. Punch. Okay, we're in. Just like, what, what? that's just stupid. Don't do that. Um, just, first of all, that. Don't do that. Second of all... You know, Grisha is, you know, then gets pulled into the, to the Restorationists and he, you know, he carves the same scar um, on his chest and everything uh, to show his dedication to the cause. And he learns about this uh, Eldian that has somehow infiltrated into the um, Marley Security Forces, who is under the codename of the Owl. And he ends up you know, they, they get this information and he sends them Dina Fritz, who is this, um, who is a descendant of the Fritz line. So she has royal blood. And we learn, of course, that the Eldian Restorationist goal is that they want to restore Eldia. Of course, they want to restore it to its glory. They don't want to be under the thumb of Marley anymore or any of these other nations. They want to free all the other Eldians. They want to prove to the world that no, Amir Fritz was not this horrible person, that she wasn't this devil. She was like this, this, you know, more of a goddess, more of a saint type of a thing and everything. And it's a very interesting way that they show that um, because, you know, of course, in the series, the way that we're introduced to the Titans is that they are the enemy. And then, of course, throughout the course of the, you know, first series, we see, oh, Aaron can turn into a Titan. Oh, he's not the only one. Annie can turn into a Titan. And then we see the same thing with, you know, Bertolt and Reiner and Emir um, from the Survey Corps. We see that with all of them. Okay, they can all turn into Titans. And then, you know, we learn about, you know, that we see all these other Titans. And then they do the reveal that Connie's mom got turned into a Titan. And that all of those Titans that they thought had come from outside the walls and made their way inside the walls um recently are actually coming from inside the walls that they were created and you know they, they start figuring out that oh that the humans can turn into titans that these titans are actually humans that have been turned into these monsters and it's you know so it's just like okay but it doesn't change the fact that they have now become these killing machines uh the the shifters being a um a, uh, you know, the uh, exception to those rules. Although, you know, we never see Connie's mom eat anyone. We never see Connie's mom actually eat anyone. She, you know, Connie kind of tries to sacrifice Falco to her, but that doesn't end up happening, of course. Um, that, that, that comes out, you know, that doesn't end up happening, of course, and we'll see that in the anime. But, you know, Connie's mom never ate anyone. But, 
there were the other titans that were made from the people that were in his village that probably did end up, you know, killing people, either killing survey corps members or other, you know, innocent civilians of, of inside the walls. Um, and so, so that we have those things. But then we also see when it comes to the Marleans, how they use the Eldians is, you know, they brainwash them basically into, oh, the only way that you can repent for, you know, Amir Fritz's sins, for your ancestors' sins, is by letting yourself be turned into a Titan and then we drop you on, you know, the enemies. We see this in, you know, at uh, Fort Salta in, uh, you know, at the uh, beginning of the fourth season. Um, Again, some of the stuff we'll go over in the uh, uh, Subjects of Amir video. Um, but, or I have gone over, I will go over depending on what order I post these in. Um, but, you know, the, the Eldians, the Elder in the Restoration, is, you know, Grisha and his group, and we see some other members of their, um, of them there. Um, and, you know, he meets Dina Fritz, and, you know, and he vows that, you know, oh, we will find our way to Paradis, and we will find our way to the, um, you know, the founding Titan with, you know, the information that, you know, the owl has given them. They find, you know, their, their plan is, you know, we need to get a member of the royal family. That's where Dina comes in. We need to get to Paradis. We need to get all the way into the walls. We need to get to the current royal family that's there. And then, you know, take back the founding Titan and give to Dina because her people didn't leave. Her parents and grandparents or whatever didn't leave. They didn't abandon us. The other line of the Fritz family did, and they're the bad ones. And then once we get a hold of the founding Titan, we can then, you know, control all the Titans that have been created. And then we can, you know, then, you know, free Eldia, free the Eldians and everything and restore Eldia to its former glory. And, you know, that's that's Grisha's plan and everything, and he seems to become kind of the leader of the movement, and him, him and Dina, of course, get married. And then, of course, you know, she teaches them more about, like, you know, stuff that only the royal family knew, probably. She teaches uh, them that. And then, of course, we have it that, you know, him and, you know, Dina get married, as I said, and then they have Zeke. And for a short time, it wasn't that Grisha forgot about, you know, helping the Eldians and restoring Eldia and everything like that. But for a time, he was happy. He had his wife, he had his son, you know, he had his parents. He still missed Faye, of course, but he, you know, he, he, you know, he had this life here. And then, of course, uh, that's, you know, then, of course, the Marleans start making more of the announcement of the, you know, the, the Marleyan Warrior Project. And what ends up happening is, of course, this is when Grisha and Dina develop the idea, we send Zeke into the program. He has royal blood. He can then get a hold of one of the Titans, and then he can be the one that ends up going to attack Paradis, and then he can go and he can get the founding Titan. So, you know, two birds with one stone type of thing. So, you know, they send Zeke in. And, you know... He's getting all these mixed signals because from his teachers um, in the Merlin Warrior Project and everything, you know, he, he's learning how to be a, a good soldier, of course. You know, he's learning how to, you know, we see him with learning how to take care of his weaponry and everything like that and having to be physically strong and everything. But then we also, of course, are, you know, they're definitely also still, you know, beating into them. Well, not beating into them because they're, they're, they need the kids to still be loyal to Marley. So beating them is probably not the best idea. Um, but they are, you know, still showing them the propaganda and everything, you know, the, oh, the, the Eldians are bad, your ancestors did these horrible things, you know, you need to, you know, you know, you need to do this to be able to atone for what they did, you know, also, you know, if you get to be, you know, if you become one of the warriors in your family, will get the honorary Marleyan status and everything, and they'll be treated better, um, and Zeke also gets this from his grandparents, from Mr. Yeager and his, his grandmother, about the fact that, you know, oh, you know, this is, you know, these horrible things that, you know, that the ancestors did, that Emir Fritz did, that, you know, that the other Eldians did, that they turned these, you know, turned Eldians into Titans, and then they sent him to, sent them to attack these other places, you know, wipe out bloodlines and everything like that. And, you know, so he gets that from them. But then on the flip side, we have it where, you know, Grisha is like, 
oh no, that's not true. That never happened. It's a complete and utter lie. They didn't do that. We didn't do these horrible things, you know, Largos and or Lagos and like all these other places. It's like, no, 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 no. Those, those didn't actually happen. Uh, it is complete and utter Marleyan propaganda. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's the, basically the entire thing of, you know, the winners are the ones that get the right history. And, you know, that's, that's been proven time and time again, you know, it's the winners are the ones that write the history books because the losers are all dead or now, you know, taken over. So then you teach the kids, you know, that concept I'll, you know, show a little bit more, uh, talk a little bit more about in the, uh, uh, subjects of the mirror video. Um, but what ends up happening is of course, you know, Grisha is very much, you know, he's still, you know, training Zeke, you know, he's still, you know, encouraging him. Yes, he has to be a Marleyan soldier. And of course, Zeke hears his parents talking about this. And he, of course, you know, finds out about his parents being part of the, the Restorationists. And at this point, he's already started to develop a friendship with uh, Tom. And of course, this ends up, hap this results in, uh, you know, Zeke tells Tom that, you know, I, you know, my, uh, my parents are actually part of the, uh, the restorationists and, you know, we were, you know, they were going to do all this other stuff and all these other things. And they wanted me to do this and do that and do this and do that. And what ends up happening is, you know, Tom is like, uh, 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 Tom basically is like, I'm not going to let another kid die or get it to have a kid be turned into this be turned into a Titan and then sent to Rome and then kill. I'm not going to do that in this case. Um, so he, of course, convinces, he, oh, no, you, you have to hand in your parents because if the, if the, if the Marleic public, you know, public security forces find out about this, that your parents are the restorationists and that you knew about it and didn't do anything about it, that you were aware of what was going on, then not only will they torture and, you know, then take your parents to paradise and turn them into Titans, they'll do the same thing to you and to your grandparents as punishment and everything. And this is, of course, when Zeke, you know, he, he, he turns on his parents, he, you know, tells on them to the public security forces, turn, you know, says, you know, no, my parents are restorationists and they were doing all of this and everything and it protects his grandparents and it, you know then you know Zeke probably that act alone is one of the things that probably ends up getting Zeke to become the beast titan years later um when the time comes uh when it's time for uh you know Tom to pass on uh when it, you know Tom's time is kind of uh coming to an end um, but of course, this is what, you know, then we turn to Grisha's side of things, whereas, you know, he thinks that his son was, you know, tricked or forced into doing this and everything. And then, you know, then, he, you know, Grisha is tortured and Dean is tortured and all the rest of the members of the Restorationists are all tortured and everything by the Malay, Malay Public Security Forces and everything by Gross and by Kruger and by all this other stuff, uh, for, you know, for these crimes and everything. And... By a technicality, I don't ever think they actually have committed any specific, like, they didn't kill anyone. They didn't, you know, actually end up physically harming anyone, as far as I'm aware. Um, but, of course, in the Marley of Public Security eyes, it's basically the concept of, you know, domestic terrorism. Which, yeah, I can see where that comes into play in that case. It's, oh, well, they were plotting something to overthrow the government or whatever. And, you know, you know we can't have that um type of thing so there's that type of a thing coming from that um and of course you know then there are, you know uh, grisha and the rest of the restorationists are taken to paradis and uh one of the men uh named uh uh grice who uh, i think i said the merlin uh warrior video is he i think he's like the uncle or something of um cult and falco i think he's their uncle or great uncle or something along those lines there's a relation there um, and, you know, so he doesn't get turned into the Titan, you know, we, you know, we see that, you know, they push him off the wall and he starts running and then they start turning all of the rest of the restorationists into Titans. And we see like this old man there who ends up getting turned into a Titan. And he later on is the same Titan that, uh, is the one that, uh, almost ate Armin and ended up being, uh, Aaron and then Aaron transforms inside of him. Uh, there's a couple of other ones that we see that are other Titans that pop up later in the series, um, 
And then we have it where, you know, Grish is kind of the last one that's there and we have Gross is there and we have Kruger and then Gross basically ends up deciding that he's going to kind of uh, torture uh, Grisha some more. And, you know, he's like, well, you know, all those years ago, you know, your sister, no, I didn't take her back to the gate. I let my sons let our dogs rip her apart because they needed to learn about death. And I'm just like, push him off the wall, push him off the wall, push him off the wall, do it, do it, do it. Um, <laughs> you know, type thing of, you know, there'd be poetic justice in that. And it, it kind of ends up getting to be poetic justice a bit. Um, it would be poetic justice if like, you know, they turn Grisha into the Titan and they drop him onto the ground. And then, like, he looks up, and he's just, like, he's taller enough. He just, like, grabs Grace and eats him. Or grabs Gross and, like, eats him. That would have been, I would have been perfectly fine with that. Um, <laughs> doesn't happen. Gross still ends up dying, of course. Um, which is good. Um, not soon enough, but he still dies. Um, but, you know, this is when they bring Dina over. And, you know... Grisha tries to get them to, you know, not not turn her into a titan. He's like, no, she, she try, he tries to say that she's royal blood. Uh, Kruger stops him. And uh, Dina gets turned into a titan. We see this. We know that she later ends up being, you know, she gets turned into the smiling titan. Which, again, not showing a picture because that's the one that I find the most disturbing out of all the titans. Um, and, you know, and, you know, she goes off. You know, she, she told Grisha, you know, no matter what, I'll always, you know, kind of the whole concept of, you know, no matter how far, how long this lasts or whatever, I will find you again. Which, of course, flips on its head in a very bad way. And she's, of course, the Titan that ends up killing Carla, um, you know, Aaron's mother, you know, years later. And, you know, Grisha watches as this, you know, this horrible thing happens. And he sees his wife get turned into a Titan and all of his friends and everything got turned into Titans. And now they're going to go and eat other people, you know, cause more problems for the, the Paradise residents and everything for the residents inside the walls and such. And then, of course, this is when, you know, Grice is about or Gross is about to turn Grisha into a Titan. He turns this other uh, Merlin that's or this other Eldian that's there turns him into a Titan and I think this Titan ends up being what's called the, uh, the, the Peeping Titan or something like that. Um, and, you know, his, Gross is like, well, we're going to turn you into about the same size Titan as that. And then we're going to watch the two of you kill each other, you know, fight or whatever. You know, we're going to watch as you two fight each other. You know, amusement. And uh, Kruger doesn't let this happen. You know, all the rest of the soldiers have gone back to their, sh gone back to the ship to wait. And then what Kruger does is he basically shoves Gross off of the wall. Gross falls down, is killed by the, uh, the Titan that's there. And then, you know, Kruger then explains to Grisha that all this time I've been the owl. You know, I, when I was a child, I watched when my parents were burned to death because they were part of another previous incarnation of the Restorationists. Or they may have been, you know, maybe they may have, well, they may not have been members of the same cult that, like, Amir from the Survey Corps was part of, but maybe they were part of something similar to that, some other, just other type of, you know, underground thing. And, you know, Kruger's like, I'm the owl. Um, I, you know, was able to bribe or find a doctor that was able to, you know, falsify my blood report and everything to say that I wasn't an Eldian. Uh, that I was a Marlan, and then I worked my way up through the, uh, you know, the public security forces and made my way all the way up to this. You know, I've killed and tortured so many Eldians. I don't even know how many it is at this point in time just to get myself to this level. I, you know, and then he turns into the attack titan and he, you know, destroys the ship that the uh, rest of the Eldian, you know, that the rest of the Marlan soldiers were on and kills them or drowns them or whatever the case is. And he's like, I have the power of the attack titan because I managed to steal it. How the frick did he manage to do that is what I want to know. Because first he would have had to have found the previous holder of the attack titan, which we know nothing about them. Uh, you know, found the previous member or previous holder of the attack titan. And then had to find, you know, the, the serum or whatever that would change him into a titan. And then he would have had to, you know, to change, you know, Kruger would have had to find the serum to change himself into a Titan and then eat 
the other part, the other, the, you know, the previous bearer of the attack Titan, then then they gain that power. And given the fact that he says he's near the end of his time, um, he is, you know, it's, that was probably about 13 years ago, you know, 12 and a half to 13, you know, 12, 12 and a half, 13 years ago range. And, you know, it's like, how did no one notice this? How did none of the Marleyan forces in you know, the security forces ever notice this? They say that the, like the Titan was stolen, but I mean, like that's, that's a, that's like, you know, Ocean's 11, a level, you know, 11 of like, you know, heist type thing. Like, did he get other, you know, other Eldians involved in this? How did he do it? Did he like convince the previous holder of the attack Titan that this was a good idea? <laughs> type thing i just like how how did they do this i want it's like if, if if we don't get a sequel series we could at least get like a mini series about like how did how did aaron Kruger pull that off i want to know how he pulled that off <laughs> um and then you know Kruger then explains to grisha you know oh well you know doctors make good spies and everything and that's why i did this you know the reason that I chose you even way back when you were a kid, which, um, given that time frame, he didn't have the Titan at that point in time. Uh, he wouldn't have had the Titan yet, um, considering it's been at, you know, more than 13 years since Grisha was a child between, you know, when he grew up, you know, when that happened to him as, you know, a child, eight, nine, whatever range he was when that happened, when, you know, Faye died, and then when he grows up, and then he becomes a doctor, and then, you know, however many years for, you know, Zeke to grow up, to get to be, you know, that, the correct age and everything. So, Grisha did, or, uh, uh, Kruger did not have the, the Attack Titan back then, um, but he at least probably kept tabs on, uh, Grisha since then, and then continually kept an eye on him even more, uh, later on, and then, of course, probably found out that he was one of the, uh, restorationists, and then, of course, he's like, okay, well, this kid will be useful, and then he, you know, you now he's like, okay, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take this, you know, this syringe with the rest, more of the stuff in it, I'm gonna eject you with it, you're gonna turn into a titan, and then you're gonna devour me. And then you will gain the power of the Attack Titan along with my memories and possibly access to other memories from uh, previous bearers uh, going back, depending on stuff. And then you have to then make your way to the walls, make your way inside the walls, and then, you know, do all this, you know, find someone, fall in love, have, you know, f have a child, and then find the, f find the founding Titan. And, you know, to be able to carry this out. And we've seen this in the last bit of the manga. We haven't seen it in the anime yet. Um, you know, Grisha, well, we know that Grisha does do this because he does make his way to the walls. He ends up becoming friends with uh, Keith, uh, Keith, Sot uh, Keith Shadez. And, you know, he meets Carla and they fall in love and he saves her life. Those two kind of go in the opposite way. If he saves her life, then they fall in love, whatever the case may be. And then, you know, they had, they got married and they had Aaron and then, you know, he was happy. He had Aaron again, he had Carla and, you know, and then later on, you know, he had Mikasa, but he also, you know, he also kept trying to, and you know, this is the part that we see in the manga so far, but haven't seen in the anime. I guess the, the anime hasn't gone over this part yet, of course. Um, it'll probably get, it'll definitely get gone over in the uh, second half of uh, season four. Um, but, you know, we see that he's slowly working his way, you know, kind of up through the ranks of, you know, he, he saved this group from the plague and everything. So he's got to be a really good doctor and like, he's, you know, like the best doctor around. And he, you know, works his way through, you know, different noblemen and everything, you know, trying to learn more and more about, you know, who's the real king of the walls and all that stuff. And he ends up finding out where the, um, you know, where the Reese family chapel is. And he goes there and we see that he goes there still when Aaron is kind of young. And he could have gone in there and he could have gotten the power of the founding titan at that point in time he could have gone in there transformed and then you know devoured either may have may uh may have been frida at that point in time yeah it might have been frida at that point in time um may not have or it may still have been yuri but i'm leaning more it was probably frida at that point in time um that had the power 
and and you know he he could have done that and he could have had the founding tighten a lot sooner but he just he couldn't do it and he went back home and he went back and he still had you know Carla and Aaron and then Mika so later on of course um after you know the horror that happened with her parents but then it's not until you know the day that you know the the wall falls and she you know that you know the colossal titan shows up that he's like I have to go and do this and this is of course when we when it's revealed that you know via the flashbacks and everything that Aaron uh you know Aaron in the future <laughs> kind of went and kind of forced slash possessed type thing for his father to make him go and do that made his father leave Shikanshina that day made his father you know go to where the Reese's Chapel was get you know go in there transform you know tried to beg them to you know give him the power to stop the Titans and then he transformed and then he you know defeated Rita and devoured her and gained the power that way and then slaughtered the rest of the Reese family except for Rod who he allowed to escape and then, you know, we, we see that Grisha despised having to hurt the children. But, you know, it's, you know, it's that it's not quite Aaron that made him do it. It's kind of like the omnipresent portion of it that's there where it's like, you know, these two conflicting things inside of Aaron. But, you know, and now kind of the restorationists, that concept has kind of now been passed on to the Jaegerists. That, you know, they want to, you know, the Agorists may not want to, you know, dominate the world, but they want to have Paradise be safe. And they probably want to invite any other surviving Eldians to Paradise to keep them there, to keep the Eldians safe and everything. And, you know, as we've seen in the extra chapters, eventually it falls. Eldia falls again. And, you know... Maybe that is Mikasa's descendant that's there that ended up that that ended up finding you know the tree. Maybe they go in. Maybe they don't. We don't know. Um, but you know the you know the the Eldian restorationists kind of now pass their that torch to a degree on to the Yeagerus. Um It would have been kind of interesting though because I mentioned in one of the videos about. Um, if by some chance if there would have been a way to be able to change people who had been turned into titans change them back into humans without having them devour a shifter like would there be a way of doing that would like the founding titan have had the power to be able to control them and make them revert or would it have been that like maybe some combination of something injected or uh, ingested by a, a regular titan a pure titan would then allow them to change back into a human. You know, we don't know that that's not something that uh, was gone over in the manga at all, or I don't know if that's been gone over in the interviews. Uh, if it has, I'm just not aware of it. Um, but, you know, had it had there been a way of doing that, then, you know, instead of it being that, you know, all these, all these titans and everything had to roam around, and had you know Carl Fritz, the you know 40, 145th King of the Walls, Carl, Carl Fritz, um, or first King of the Walls, whatever. Um, he's got too many freaking titles. Um, that he, you know, if he hadn't away erased everyone's memories of oh no, the Eldians are the one that turns into Titans and everything, that you know, if that knowledge was still available, then maybe Grisha would have been able to help find that knowledge. And then, you know, change so many of those others back, you know, change Dina back, change all these, you know, all the rest of the restorationists that were still alive, change them back into humans and everything, you know, maybe. Um, but of course we see with the, uh, with the Eldians that, you know, their, their vision of Amir Fritz is, you know, this, this goddess, this divine being that, you know, had had these amazing powers and that she built roads and bridges and helped with agriculture and cities and all this other stuff and that it just you know that she did all these wonderful things but the marlans and these other and these other cultures claim that she was nothing but this horrible monster and that her descendants are nothing but horrible monsters unless they're willing to you know work 
work alongside, work with Marley and sacrifice themselves. You know, so you can see where the Mar where the Eldian Restorationists are coming from, but I do think that I think it was uh, uh, Kruger, Aaron Kruger, that had the quote, and I think I used it on a previous video about the you know that you know to some people you know someone's a god, to others they're a demon. You know, the truth kind of lies in between, and you know that is something that we have to learn. And that's something that the people in uh, Attack on Titan need to learn that, you know, just because someone's an Eldian, that doesn't make them a bad person. Just because someone's a Marleyan, that doesn't make them a bad person. You know, there's there's dichotomies in there. Like, you know, I would have said that Frida probably was a good queen, but unfortunately, because of the first king's will, she wasn't able to do what she wanted to do. Same thing with Yuri. Um, you know... You know, it's that whole problem there of, you know, what's real, what's not. Um, so, that's what I got for this one. Um, there should be, either I have one or two more after this one, depending on what order I post them in. Uh, the final video for this series is going to be the uh, Titan Worshippers from uh, Before the Fall. But, um, that's what I got for this video. So, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye! My brothers... Let us overthrow Marley. Let us correct the errors of history, and let us regain our pride as Eldians. My brothers, we will fight until the day Eldia returns.